Hello? She is amazing, you guys. Lori, you, your energy is just fabulous. You are an absolute gem. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. My name, we were back there, you guys. I was doing this thing that kids do. How does that go? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, my name is Christy Johnson. I am in recovery. I love all things recovery related. That is me and my babies. Um, peer support specialist, community advocate. I love, basic, I like to consider myself a doer of things, right? I like to help people. I like to answer my phone at one in the morning and just, you know, do what I can, right? We're all equals. Um, so, to me, recovery means that not only can I wake up and know that I have surrounded not only my children, but myself with positivity, love, health, and stability, but I can support others in reaching their goals, right? So when I was young, chaos was a normal, right? I didn't know, you know, my friends had like those moms and dads and, you know, they grew up in the same houses forever. And, you know, I didn't know what that was like, whether that be instability, foster care, being mistreated or not knowing what my tomorrow would bring. Uh, my life took a very pivotal toll when I lost my grandfather in 2007. Uh, my grandfather always tried to be my knight in shining armor, right? He was always there. He was my go-to. He was, I told him about my first period. You know what I mean? Like, he was my guy. <laughs> um, so after that, I just kind of felt lost, right? And can you imagine feeling lost when you kind of never felt like you belonged? It's just, it's not a good feeling. So in 2007, I gave birth to my first child with one goal of being the most ama amazing mother possible, and I was. Um, however, shortly after their birth, I went out for a night and was reintroduced to drugs, and I could not stop. So next thing you know, nine years fly by. And in those nine years was a child who would eventually forget what their mother looked like and who she was. Um, let's see. I'm trying to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, and more children whom I choose, uh, chose the beautiful gift of adoption for. Numerous warrants, prison sentences, drug task force raids, and you guys, I had absolutely no care in the world what was going to happen to me. I just, I was living that life, right? Living a life full of chaos means that I did not have to focus on real feelings, and I'm sure a lot of you guys in here can relate to what that's like, right? We wanted to stay numb. We wanted to run from our issues, and we just wanted to be caught up in the chaos, right? You see, I didn't understand addiction. I thought, you know, I'm a monster. I'd rather do this than be a mom. I didn't get it. And I, what do we do when our life is just unraveling? We keep going, right? We think it's too late. We think we're not worth it. We look at all the things we've done, prison sentences, raids, children, children that don't know you're their mom. And we're just like, you know what? Screw it. There's no point. So I just kept living that life. Um, so I got to a point where I would like to consider it my rock bottom, and I had a failed suicide attempt. And um, within 24 hours of waking up from that, now keep in mind, I had been on the run with a felony warrant for a long time. It blew my mind how long that, you know, I was running and they couldn't find me. Within 24 hours of that failed attempt, I was picked up on that warrant. And I can stand here today and tell you guys, because of that is why I am where I am. Um, what I didn't know was that that felony warrant would be my last, and I can tell you guys that I have been drug-free since 2015. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> uh, you see, what I did, what a lot of people do, and I took the treatment option with the mentality of like, oh, sweet, I'll, I'll get out sooner, right? I can get back to the game. I can start making money again, and, you know, do that's what we do, right? Um, my mind was just not in the right place. You know, I, I went to treatment, I entered recovery. Did I stay in recovery? No, I got lost again for a while. However, those seeds that were planted eventually grew. And because of those seeds, again, I can stand here and tell you that I've been drug free since then, but recovery is not perfect, right? No two people's recovery in this room will look the same. My recovery will not look the same as anybody else's. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about recovery, right? A lot of people think, oh, recovery has to be this or recovery has to be that. No, whatever your recovery is, you honor that. This is where I swear. <laughs> you honor that and you run with it, right? Um, so after I joined recovery, uh, I got pregnant and I gave birth to the most amazing little boy right there. His name is Gat. He is awesome. <laughs> and due to my past, social services actually removed him from my care after I was already in recovery. Because on paper, they were like, whoa, slow down. You have been to prison. You've given birth to children that you do not have. You are not cut out to be a mom. 
And so in the middle of the winter, after an, a C-section, everything, I was walking over a mile to my supervised visits first thing in the morning after working a night shift. And I went to those visits convinced that I was never going to be his mom. But something about that made me just want to keep showing up. And he is mine. He is all mine. He, yeah. <laughs> oh. And I, I do what I do, you guys, so I can help other moms do that and other dads do that and grandparents and everything, right? Like, we are built and capable of way more stuff than we, we have any idea, you know? And so for a long time, I used to think recovery meant, you know, just not touching the drugs. And it took me a while to realize that there was work to be done, working through guilt, shame, trauma, and years of years of things, a lot of things. <laughs> Um, don't get me wrong, it's not easy. Some days are really hard and messy, but I always tell myself, and I would love to tell you guys this, my hardest day in recovery is better than my best day using, by far, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, every day I do my best, and what my best is can change from day to day. Nobody's perfect, and we are all beautifully flawed creatures. Um, because of my recovery, not only do I get to build an incredible life for my children and I, I get to work alongside of some of the most passionate and fierce individuals in North Dakota. And I know you guys have seen a lot of them on stage today. We are spoiled, you guys, with the people that we have leading our community in North Dakota. They are absolutely wonderful. So with that said, that is 35 years of my nutshell life crammed down into three minutes. <laughs> so I would love to share a little bit about some initiatives that we have going on. And again, thank you for letting me give you guys a little spiel of who I am. Um, I know I've been in touch with a lot of you guys. Who in here has done peer support or is peer support? You guys rock. We love you guys. You guys do great work and we are so grateful for you guys. Beyond grateful. And so, and here's another thing. So peer support, you guys, it had a lot to do with me entering recovery, right? And a lot of people think, well, peer support. You know, I've had peer support, people in the peer support training, um, I'm also the peer support administrator, that have been like, you know, I've never done drugs or alcohol. I don't think this is for me. That is a really big misconception, right? People can do peer support for anything. It's not just for drugs or alcohol. It can be mental health, eating disorders, anything. You know, I had this lady in the training and she's like, oh, you know, I've had a really good life. And I'm like, but you, there's something that you've gone through, right? Well, she had been through a divorce. That right there is peer support, right? She can use that experience to help others get through that same struggle. So in North Dakota, again, we're kind of spoiled. So we have some awesome initiatives going on that I just kind of wanted to touch base on. One of them is Recovery Talk. This is great. So you can call or text. This is a completely free service to get connected with somebody that's been there, right? Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people struggle after 5 p.m. when services are closed, right? So we started this initiative to just get people connected, right? Whether they want to talk about a bad day or, hey, you know, I'm thinking of going to a meeting. I live in Minot, for example. When we want to connect those individuals with resources so they can start, start on that journey. And then the other one, get involved in peer support. Let's give it up for peer support. Woo! <laughs> yes, you guys are all amazing. So that is, oh, and one more thing. I don't think we have a slide for it. So we have a program called Call K. Um, this program was built around the story of a mom that um, has dealt with child protection and losing kids and is living a successful life in recovery. If you guys want any information on that, it is very similar to the recovery talk that I was just talking about. The whole goal with it is that we can get moms or dads really into recovery if they really want to be, you know, if they want to try something different. The phone is answered by text, calls, anything, day or night. And again, that's just to offer support. So. With that said, I will end here. Thank you for having me, everybody, and you guys are absolutely fabulous. <laughs>